for that. Now, a tale of a teenager growing up in the late 70s and 80s and the impact of Brit band The Jam are the focus of an acclaimed book. A crafty cigarette gives a detailed account of London's mob scene during the period and has been endorsed by the likes of Paul Weller. Well, its author, Matteo Sadarazzi, joins me now. Matteo, um, talk me through this period, because it is a fascinating period, not just in music, but also in London. Why did you want to make it the focus of this book? Well, first of all, it's actually the suburbs it's set in, but... but... It was just an era that but there was a lot of change. Music was exciting. Obviously, Thatcher government had just come in. It was just everything. There was an impact, and there was these kids, including myself, that sort of were influenced by the sixties. We had no idea what the mod thing was, and we just we took it like a moth, you know, like a, whatever the terminology is. It was just an exciting times, and the jam just helped drive us towards that. And this was obviously a period you grew up in. Yeah. So, how much of your own experiences are in this novel? Quite a lot. I used the structure. I mean, I was like a, a schoolboy. I was playing with action man. Then I heard the jam for the first time, and then I became a mod. But there's a lot of antics and a lot of madness in the book. It's got a lot of dark humour, which there was an element with me, but not as mad as it is in the book. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I had to have some entertainment value. Otherwise, it would be just me moaning. Okay, and also, it's not just a nostalgic kind of look back at the past. No. There's lots of kind of sort of struggles in there as well. Oh, exactly. I mean, that's that's the, what a lot of people will do, including myself. When you look back, it can be rose tinted glasses. I do want to do that. I wanted to write it in an authentic person. So the book is worded like an 11 year old, he goes up to the age of 13, would sound. You know, so there's grammatical mistakes. He, he's, he's, he's sometimes naive, not stupid, naive. And it's not the be all and end all of being a part of a cult or a youth culture, because you are questioning who you are, whether it's the right thing to be part of running with a gang, whether you know whether you should just that education or whether you should be more loyal to your girlfriend. So it's a confusing time. And I wanted that to come in the book as long as a bit of humor. And thinking about that time and kind of growing up with all the different sort of elements of music, mod as well as there were lots of other things going on, what was it like kind of getting out there? Why was it such an exciting period? It was, that's a good question. It was exciting because there was, that was all, you know, that was the only thing on offer it was music, which is a great thing. It was exciting, but also it was very violent. It was very violent, which I think a lot of people forget. I mean, going, for instance, the first gig I ever went to was the Jam at the Hammersmith Ocean, and I was only about 12, 13, and I, you know, we got chased by skinheads. It was that bad. It was, you know, anywhere, even going into Kingston, which is like a 10-minute bus life from us, you know, you had to w watch out for the skinheads. And the skinheads were bullies. There's no two ways about it. I mean, they were picking on small kids that were like eight stone, and these were guys that were 16, 17, 18 upwards. They probably knew how to fight, but they wouldn't take it out on anyone else their own size. They would take it out on, you know, a little 11-year-old, 12-year-old schoolboy, and obviously that gave them pleasure. You know, sad, really. Wow, but this culture, mod culture, it's one of the few that's actually survived, because there are people that are still very much dressing the clothes and still enjoying the music. Why do you think it has survived? It's a good look. It's a good, basically, it's a good look. It's a safe look. I remember mean, one saying, it's a good look. It's exciting. It's exciting. And you can take what you want of it. You know, it's, and I think, you know, every generation when they discover the jam, they think, great. And then they go further back, they look at the small faces. And then you've got the diversity. You can go down the soul route, you know, tell the Motown, Stax, all those lines. And then you've got the whole 90s things with Oasis. And there's some good, you know, bands in their early 20s now that are producing music. So I personally don't think we'll go. Scooters are great to ride on, you know. So I think it's just, it's clean, it's good fun. It is a very cool look with the school scooters out, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. And you could say the king of the mod scene, Paul Weller, he has kind of backed this book. How well, did that happen? No, he didn't back it. I mean, that's just all I want to tell I wasn't here. Well, so, so, Paul, I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to like you get you to sell my book. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it was. I, I, I bumped into Paul. I, I interviewed Paul many years ago, and I've done a fanzine called Positive and Geobadness, which actually I used to sell in Kenton High Street. And I was with a friend, and we saw Paul, purely by accident, bumped into him. And I told him about the novel, he was receptive, I gave him a copy of it, and he liked it. But importantly, John Cooper Clark, the punk poet, he'd done the forward for, for the book, that was a great thing. And Irvin Welsh has endorsed it by saying it's a great debut, so I've got the support. I've got more of the endorsement of Irvin Welsh and John Cooper Clark than Paul Weller. Yeah. Paul Weller's got a copy, <laughs> I don't know what he's thought about it, he hasn't got back to me. But John Cooper Clark and Irvin Welsh do support me. And that means a lot. For the writer, for the first time, to get the support of these guys is good. And what are your next steps? Because obviously, debut novel, you're already thinking about your, your next the next book? Yeah, I've, actually, that's, that will be out on, in October. It's called Tales of Oscar Paul and Other Adventures. <laughs> it's a casual, and it's going to be sort of short stories from the 70s, 80s, 90s, present day with different genres. And Oscar Paul's going to make a cameo in that. 
we've got, I'm bringing out another book called by a guy called Dane Cavanaugh, which is called The Secret Tales of a Novel. Uh, that's coming out about November, and then we're bringing out a graphic novel. So it's going to be busy, see, see how it goes. And then Crafty Cigarette Part 2, which will probably be called Crafty Smoke, will come out, yeah, will probably, <laughs> we'll say, will probably come out maybe March of next year. You know, I've been writing for six years. I enjoy it. I just, yeah, just keep going. It's, it's a buzz. Well, Mateo, congratulations Thank on your you. first book and can't wait to see what you do next. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Well, from medieval manuscripts now to modern signed first editions, you'll find them all at the London 